Hi and welcome to Copying the Master. Today as we paint a magnolia flower, we will ponder and copy Psalm 19, which in summary points us to the two most important books every one of us should read, study, and live by. We long for truth and knowledge. Our hearts and minds are always searching for something that would free us or direct us to the next best thing. In our search, we come to many books and insights Consciously and unconsciously, we are influenced by them, and ultimately, we choose what is true and what we believe. And so we have Psalm 19, a psalm which points us to two books given to men for education and instruction, two books that call for our attention and diligent study. These two books are from God Himself, and they are the Book of Creation and the Book of Scripture, God's Word. The Book of Creation is the Book of Nature, read to us by our own senses. For there is no language or speech where its voice is not heard. To slow down and venture into nature. One must take time to read this book, to see its beauty and consider how well it is made. Consider not only the visible things, but also the invisible things, the heavenly bodies with their structure, order, and influences. For all creation, all that we see and do not see, is not idle. Someone who takes time to read this book and observes nature comes to a vivid question of why and how. From other books, we are taught, it is a production of a casual hit of atoms. But Psalm 19 teaches us to see and understand that creation gives glory to a Creator, not existing from nothing made by itself, but is created by one who is infinitely wise, powerful, and good. Day after day, season after season, just as God promised to Noah. And here, while reading the book of creation, the voice of God in nature and the voice of man's word about nature stands before you. You have to choose the truth for yourself of whose voice you will believe. The second book is the excellent book of Scripture, God's Word, which reveals God's glory much more than creation. After the fall in the garden, creation was not enough. Sin had separated humanity from God. It is only the Word of God that takes us out of the fallen state and brings us back to the presence of God. The Word of God in this psalm is given six titles, attributes, or properties. First, it is perfect, perfectly free from all corruption. Nothing will be added to it or taken from it. It is designed to make the man of God perfect also, for it shows us our sinfulness and misery, showing us also the path back to God and our purpose in Him. Secondly, the testimony of the Lord is sure. We may be confident it will not deceive us. We can rely on it. For it points to the truth, giving us direction in what we have to do, a foundation in the life we have and in the life we hope for. Therefore, it makes us wise in seeking salvation. Thirdly, the statutes of the Lord are right. The statutes set in place by God's authority agreeing with the internal rules and principles of good and evil. And because they are right, they rejoice the heart by restoring us to a right mind. Fourthly, the command of the Lord is pure. It is clear without any darkness. It is not mixed or corrupted. And those who receive and embrace the commands become pure as well. 
for this is the ordinary way that the Holy Spirit enlightens our eyes, bringing us to a sight and sense of our own sin and directing us to a better way. Fifthly, the fear of the Lord is clean. This fear, reigning in our heart and practice in our life, is the true flow and goodness of our life. It makes us clean, for even though the ceremonial law is no longer done, the law concerning the fear of the Lord is ever the same. And sixth, the judgments of the Lord are true. The judgments are all of God's laws, made with infinite wisdom and truth. There is no unrighteousness in any of them. And here we have the two books given to us from God, the book of creation and the book of scripture. Two books that not only give us understanding and wisdom, but also instruct us and set us on a path for our life. Those who choose in the depths of their heart to believe these two books find themselves in love with God, far beyond all the wealth of the world, far beyond all the pleasures and delights of the earthly life. It's gold and honey. The word of God received by faith is sweet to the soul. The sweetness to the soul leads to a longing for more, and in the search for more, the word of God becomes the word of warning, warning us to avoid the danger of sin and to do that which is supposed to be done, that which we are purposed to do. In obedience to the word, God promises us a great reward, for the commandment is the reward itself. From God's laws and rules we find peace and joy. Our sorrows are easier to bear. Life is truly valued and death is not feared. We are all guilty of many sins. God knows about us much more than we know even about ourselves. But this is not a hindrance. Instead, it is an invitation to prayer, an invitation to the throne of grace, to cry out as David did for help from the Lord himself, to cleanse us and keep us from hidden and willful, presumptuous sins from arrogant, bold sins of our nature. Psalm 19 To the Chief Musician of Psalm of David The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and its circuit to the other end and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. Commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, ye than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer.
If you are looking for books that will change your life, then look no further than the suggestion given in Psalm 19. For in the book of nature, in the book of scripture, you will find that which your soul longs for. Thank you for watching this video. If it has blessed you in some way, please share your thoughts in the comment. Subscribe and come back every Thursday for more art and scripture journaling. May the Lord bless you as you seek to glorify Him in all that you do.